All right, well, welcome to day two, technically, sort of day one. We spent all day yesterday traveling, didn't have much time to film, but come and have a look at where we are. We're just uh, outside of Glencoe, which is both a village as well as an actual glen, which is a, a valley-like thing, but have a look at some of the scenery that we've got outside. Absolutely stunning. So we um, stayed here in a hotel overnight, which uh, was because I needed to... Um, do creation conversations last night. Uh, the rest of the family basically camped. We needed internet and able to broadcast and do stuff. But uh, yeah, we got upgraded as well in our hotel room. So we got a proper lake view, which we weren't supposed to have, which is, which is lovely. And it's been really nice to uh, spend some time soaking in the scenery. Right, where are we? Right up the top of the uh, British Isles, you have Scotland. Here's Scotland up here. So we came up from this way down here, went up past Glasgow, and headed up to Glencoe, which is just under Fort William, up here. So that's where we are here, fairly north, it's the furthest north I've ever been, but um, we're not staying here, we're actually going slightly further, we're going all the way up here to, there we are, Loch Inver. So we're right up the north side. Now, a big part of what I wanted to come to Scotland for, this is sort of a technically a family holiday, right? Um, uh, courtesy of my mother-in-law, but I've always wanted to come to Scotland and I've always wanted to explore this kind of area. Um, up on the top side here, around here, plenty of fossils. Where we are at Long Kimver, and around here, plenty of geology, like big igneous and volcanic stuff. Um, loads of fantastic wildlife all around here as well. So I'm really looking forward to getting out there and, uh, and getting some wildlife, some geology, some history, some all of this stuff put together. So it should be quite exciting. What are we doing today? Well, we're just around the corner from the largest mountain in the UK. Uh, we're just around the corner from Ben Nevis, which is just above Fort William here. And uh, we're actually, we're not going to be visiting Ben Nevis, although we'll probably get to see it. We're actually going to be, well, looking at Glencoe, which is an ancient super volcano. So let's get packed up, let's head out there, let's go and see what we can find. So Glencoe itself is part of an ancient super volcano and this is a huge mass of igneous rock, so volcanic rock, which normally you'd expect to find pushed up through the surface. But that's not what we find here at Glencoe. It certainly looks like it's pushed up through the surface because it looks like it's pushed up through a sedimentary rock called the Old Red Sandstone, which I know quite well. Now the Old Red Sandstone typically is considered to be a desert stone, but the evidence for water-based deposition is overwhelming. So there's no doubt about it, when you look at the worldwide size of the Red Sands, and you look at the angle that they've been laid down in, and you compare it with real-world examples, like our creation research strata machine experiment, there's no doubt that these sandstones were laid down during the flood. So you've got a flood deposit, now it's flood, with a massive igneous lump, an old super volcano in the middle of it. That's what Glencoe is. But the unusual thing about Glencoe is the way that this igneous rock was actually formed because you stereotypically think of volcanoes as these huge globs of lava being thrown up out of the middle of the earth and that's not quite what's happened here. So we're making our way down through the glen now, as we go, 
we're heading up to a sort of open flat part which is quite uh, special it has uh, a lot to do with the old clan that used to live here and with their cattle and in fact Glencoe is famous for another thing rather than just cattle rustlers and to clue us in uh, Sarah Ann my wife who has a very avid history in all things Celtic and Scottish and Irish and old will give us a little bit of an update as to what's significant about this place as well as to the story behind the cattle rustlers Okay, so Sarah Ann, give us a little bit of the background as to what happened here at this valley and a bit of the history. Well, so this is the hidden valley of Glencoe behind us, and it was, it's like you go up a long, like a long steep gully, and it suddenly opens out into this flat plain valley you can see behind me. And this was really useful to the McDonald's of Glencoe for hiding things. And so they hid here all the cattle they stole from neighbouring clans in the 1600s. And did anything else significant happen here? Yes, so after the infamous massacre of Glencoe, which is quite well known, this valley also came in very useful when it sheltered the women and children who'd been turned out their homes in a snowstorm in the middle of the night. And so that way quite a lot of them were able to survive. Okay, so we're actually on our way to a place called the Bone Caves. Now these are um, what we would refer to as Pleistocene caves. So the caves were formed in a great big flooding event for sure. And then afterwards you had the glaciers come down. And you can actually see in the landscape all around this valley that we're walking through, it was carved out by a glacier. A very sharp, sides down into a V as the glaciers push through and cut out this whole area. So the caves were inhabited by a number of creatures from after the Ice Age, once the glaciers had retreated. And it's also one of the few places around here which is not igneous. It's limestone, so potential for some fossils, but also the bone caves are named after the bones that you find in it from all various animals including lynx, polar bears, hyenas and a whole load of other things and even some interaction or evidence of interaction with humans. Well here we are, the caves are just just around this corner We're on a fairly narrow ledge with a fairly steep side down there. But we're almost at the bone caves. So, not much further now. All right, here we are. So, the unusual thing about these caves, so this is all limestone, uh, semi-metamorphosed limestone, so it's kind of on the way to marble. But what it does mean is that all of this is able to actually form a cave. It's able to be eroded away through the acid, it's able to be dissolved, so you've got interesting connections with splenotherms or stalactites and stalagmites. And of course it's in these deep caves, which were first discovered back in the 1800s, where the original bones were found. And it goes in quite a way, so let's have a look at some of the other caves, and then let's go inside some properly and get to exploring. <laughs> I'm 
Hello. Here we have the very rare cave Labrador. So it was in these caves, right back here, where they found those bones. It's uh, head back out now.